We all have the ability to start a crowdfunding campaign. The ability to make a video and sell our brilliant new idea to the world. And although sometimes that works out pretty great, other times, not so much. But it's not only video games that go wrong on crowdfunding sites and although it has been the main focal point so far when covering the scammiest campaigns out there, I feel it's time to give them a little bit of a break as we welcome you to this brand new series simply called Kick Scammers. Don't worry, video games will still play a part in these lists but it's no longer exclusive. What we want to do is blow the bloody doors wide open and shine some light onto some of the most ridiculous crowdfunding ideas ever to grace sites such as Indiegogo and Kickstarter. So, put down your potato salad and breathe a sigh of relief as we look at four horrific crowdfunding projects you will be thankful you never backed. Unless of course you did. Then, it's gonna get a bit awkward. I'm Daniel Robertson and this is Kick Scammers, Episode 1. We all need to shave, mm, some more than others, but if you're like me, you probably keep hold of those razors a tad longer than the use-by date, until that nice, clean glide the first time you use it, then becomes a skin-ripping, cheese-grater-feeling mess. Wouldn't it be great to have that smooth shave feel every single time you use the razor? Introducing the laser razor. Yes, a freaking laser beam that you rub on your face. Surely nothing's gonna go wrong here, right? Well, originally the campaign asked for a wafty $160,000, but actually ended up getting $4,500,111. That's before it was cancelled. Not by Scarp Technologies, mind you, but instead Kickstarter themselves. Hello folks, we appreciate your support on Kickstarter. It's been overwhelming and uh, we're overwhelmingly pleased and uh, surprised at how much support we get from you. You see, on October the 8th, the team did one of the most boring update videos addressing a few concerns over the safety, battery life, as well as a few other bits that I have ever seen. It was apparent that the prototype was basically just an exaggerated idea, and they didn't really have much more than concept art and tech demos up to this point. Unlike the promotional video that very much gives the impression that they already have manufacturers in place and all they need is capital to start production. We really need your support to put the Scarp Razor into production. We have preliminary agreements with manufacturers, but we require capital to begin orders. Anyway, it turned out that after that update video on the 8th, Kickstarter wasn't happy with the process up to this point and pulled the plug only five days later, taking away at least $4 million from Scarp Technologies. The team then moved over to Indiegogo and although using the exact same promotional video and still asking for $289 plus $10 postage, they indeed managed to reach their goal, however this time only getting $507,810. Although looking at the names of the backers, maybe a few of them are here just to try and protect the gullible. But a short while later, a news report showed off what they had been working on, and it turns out it's pretty crap. But then again, somehow a razor that at the time you can't actually press against your skin, a razor that can only cut one hair at a time, and possibly worst of all, a razor that makes your ugly unshaven mug smell of burnt hair before the thread breaks. Yes, the laser also needs a thread somehow actually does at least get the odd update for those few hardcore backers that still believe in the project. Duh. Who wants a new console? Don't worry, I'm not talking about that or that. Nope, today we are looking at the Cyber Matrix 100 TU01. 
What you are looking at here is a promo video on the page that did get funded by 29 backers pledging $504 of a $500 target. The promo video is about 8 minutes long and after watching it I have no concrete idea what is actually being sold here. Something about two devices that give you the ability to make games, movies and music inside a cyberspace matrix, whatever that is. Now just like the classic potato salad kickstarter, there is actually no physical reward for the backers. In fact the only tier is $10. For this amount I will say thank you, in December 2019. There is some mock-up images of what will be made including some weird Triforce adapter in what I think is the back of the unit and in the risks and challenges section you have nothing special. In the updates before the console of the future was funded he wrote Dear backers and everyone I want to let you all know that those who pledge a lot of money please don't as I need it to build my Cyber Matrix 100. For those that pledge a little keep hitting. I'll get it somehow. The console of the future has to succeed. No more failures. I have to succeed. Sure. Before replying to his own post with, please don't retract your funds as I need it to build the Cyber Matrix 100. Now obviously nothing much has happened here except for this being one of seven projects. Five of which are just this project again and another two being books about fish. This story begins when Pascaya Sikono enters a heated battle with Lord Shinayo Johnson and attempts to re-steal a special ancient laptop left by Jehovah Christ. Pascaya kills hostile leaders as he waits for the laptop to arrive after the fall of the dark. Now I'm not here to point fingers and laugh at someone that is most likely mentally unstable. But what I will say is out of those seven projects that this guy has put forward, not one of them was cancelled by Kickstarter. I mean heck, who knows, in 2019 we may be getting the cyber console of the future. But I personally have my doubts. If anyone has any answers on how to make my cyber matrix and to promote my project, let me know. I also need help on how to build my cyber matrix. Do I need soldering tools? Can I use hot glue? Or maybe even Lego? For me this just goes to show the process in place for creating a kickstarter is very much open doors for anyone, regardless as to whether or not they actually have the ability to go ahead and complete it. But then again I have a hunch that the backers for this particular project knew exactly what they was getting themselves into. I'm going to make an animal cross dating sim, I'm not a furry I just really like animals in that way you know. <laughs> Ah, here we go, a video game. Well, do you class dating sims as video games? Well, that's up for debate. Honestly, I don't think I've ever played a dating simulator or a relationship simulation role playing game, aka RSRPG for short. So, a brony dating sim, as in a guy who likes My Little Pony, is probably not targeted for me. But hey, it might be for you, I'm not here to judge, it's your choice. So where do we start with Dark Skies, an epic dating sim? Well looking at the video for the campaign they think it's nice and easy to make a video game. Well actually the rabbit hole goes quite deep with this one. Thankfully this project at least got something right, it has been in development for 4 years. Damn that's pretty impressive. Although the math contradicts this statement as bronies only really became a thing 3 years before this project went live. The campaign also stated that the project was 95% finished, but the owner wasn't willing to show off any alpha builds because you don't see alpha builds for games like Doom 4, Halo 6, Starcraft 3 or Skyrim 3 now do ya? Hmm, 
Okay. Then developers who were originally shown to be developing the game started posting pics on their Twitter feeds explaining that they had no connection with the game at all, except for one artist who claims that she thought she was doing some concept art for a comic book. Eventually, all of the developers refused involvement and the artist also dropped out. This was before Kickstarter got flooded with My Little Pony pictures giving the game some high praise. So what the hell is going on here? Well, turns out the guy behind this was internet hoaxer Sam Hyde. Yep, the whole thing was put in place to take the horse piss out of Little Pony fans. Videos started surfacing from Sam asking for hot girls for his dating sim he's working on and even giving voice coaching lessons to the girls too. But this video right here, I just want to show you how you're supposed to deliver your lines. Um, it's, this is not going to be a joke video, so don't try to be funny, don't try to be tongue-in-cheek, don't be cynical, just straight up, we're trying to get retards to back a Kickstarter project, and it's your job to make them fall in love with you. Thankfully, the goal of $7,500 only managed to get $4,161 from 150 backers, as quite a few suddenly dropped their pledge 10 hours before the end of the project. And then, the project obviously not going to be hitting its goal also got cancelled by the creator within only a few hours of the time running out. And as usual, the only updates to be found after the campaign died were found by the backers in the comments section mainly by someone going under the name of Yoshi K, who not only updated, but gave proof as to who was a fake account and who wasn't. That was before he had a sex change, as updated by Dr. Stephen J. Croon III, who originally backed the PG-13 dating sim to buy it for his autistic son. Yes, I know, he's obviously a troll too, leaving this to be the strangest Kickstarter campaign ever. Or was it? Kickstarter is not the only way to fund your project. You've obviously got Indiegogo, Crowdfunder, Rocket Hub, Fundraiser, Go Get Funding, Start Some Good. There's bloody loads. However, there's apparently not enough and the latest craze with game makers is Patreon. And one of the most scandalous of these game developer Patreon picks is without a doubt breeding season, blending together Harvest Moon style gameplay with hentai. Now, one of the perks of this pretty unique game, other than the boobies, was the ability to actually play the latest alpha of the game in real time as the developers were designing it. So, how does a game like this play? Well, you play as the breeder, a guy or a girl, your choice. You can choose names, choose your um, livestock, and depending on the stats of each of your monster girls or monster boys, and who you pair them with, they will be able to hump each other and hopefully produce little babies, which you will eventually breed too. Yeah, it's not for everyone. However, crazily enough, the game was actually getting, at its peak, an impressive $42,000 a month. But bringing this fairly questionable game to your now in need of a wash eyeballs isn't the only reason I bring this up. Because just like so many crowdfunding projects that we've brought up in the past, the main guy behind the project, one Vladimir Sandler, ran away with the money. Now, as this is a monthly Patreon rather than just one lump sum like we're used to with other crowdfunding sites, the full amount he managed to run away with is up for debate. However, looking at the blogs of the developers who have all been left abandoned, it's apparently $190,000. Now, before you get all your pitchforks out in an angry and probably horny rage, let's look at both sides of the story. According to the developers, Sandler had the right, thanks to the wording of his contract, to walk away with not only half the entire studio's savings, but also, apparently in malice, stripped his own assets from the game, which accounted for half the work up to that point. 
and he even threatened legal action if they used his artwork, leaving the game in an almost start from scratch scenario and ultimately ended up completely closing the doors on the project for good. Now according to Sandler's own personal blog, the game would never see the light of day, and even if the team worked 24-7, it would just never get finished, and therefore he did what he needed to save what he could and start another Patreon. This time not only making it a farming slash breeding simulator game, but also adding elements of dungeon crawling too. At the time of making this video, it's getting $13,412 from 3,383 backers. And what of the backers of the original project? Well, other than the odd alpha version which is still lurking around the dark corners of the internet, just like the monster guys and monster girls in the game, they're pretty much f***ed. Hey there guys, whether you're watching this on Larry Bundy Jr's channel or My Slopes Game Room channel, thanks very much for watching. Click the links on the screen or in the description to check out either of our channels and Patreon pages. But for now, that's it from me. This is DJ Slopes signing out and hopefully I'll see you all next time.